In this video, we're going to think more about specimens. We've started with the specimen screen, and the specimen shows the plant that it's associated with. But now we need to think about what information we want to collect about the specimen. The information we want to collect about the specimen is what we're going to put in the database. So we're going to need some kind of specimen identifier, some kind of global unique identifier. We're also going to want a latitude and a longitude because a specimen will have a specific location. We'll want maybe something like planted by. So who planted this tree? Maybe some legacy information. So was it planted in dedication of somebody? And possibly a date planted. Now we want a date planted and not an age because an age, if we said, oh, it's nine years old and then we saved it, well, what happens next year? It's 10 years old and our information's out of date. So not a whole lot of information that we want to collect about the specimen, uh, but these things, the unique identifier and maybe a few attributes. Also, because this is the many side of a one-to-many relationship, we're going to want to have a foreign key back to the plants table. So we're going to need an attribute that records which plant this is a specimen of. So some kind of plant global unique identifier. So it's probably easiest to create the DTO and then to come back and create the page that's going to populate that DTO. So uh, we'll go to our DTO package, right click and say new, and we're going to say class and specimen. Whoops. Is a DTO, this is a plain old Java object, so it doesn't need to extend anything. I'm going to simply choose finish. Okay, uh, specimen. Now I'm going to say maybe uh, private int ID and then private int plant ID. Remember, that's our foreign key back to the plant table. Uh, private string latitude. We don't want to save that as a double because of floating point arithmetic. Floating point arithmetic means 0 0.33333 is not equal to 1 over 3, not equal to 1 third. A lot of times that small inaccuracy doesn't make a whole lot of difference, but in latitude and longitude, those items to the right of the decimal point are significant. So we want to store them as a string. We could also store them as a big decimal for the moment, let's just make it easy and say a string. Private string longitude. Okay, private string planted by private string planted date. We might change that from a string to a date but we'll handle that at a later time. Uh, at this point, ints for the IDs and strings for everything else looks good to me. Now we need some getters and setters, so we're going to use one of Eclipse's tools. We're going to say refactor, and we're going to say, well, let's see, let's go, go up here. Right-click, uh, actually, we'll right-click and say source instead of refactor, and then we're going to say generate getters and setters. Select all. Uh, be careful though, you notice it's it's defaulted to private, let's make it public, it's subtle but important, and I choose OK. And now we have a proper DTO with getters and setters. And now this is ready to be used in our table. So uh, OK, we have plant, specimen, and we're going to need to make a hibernate file for specimen, but let's wait until we actually have the database table created. It, in this video, our primary concern is simply making our specimens, uh, our specimens uh, page. Okay, I'm going to go back to the specimen value object, and I'm going to say, I'm going to say private specimen specimen. Okay. So I'm going to make the specimen DTO an attribute of our specimen value object. Control Shift O to organize imports, and then Control One and create getter and setter. And remember, this is on our value object, which is a managed bean. 
in our UI layer. So now we have a getter and setter for specimen. And you can remember that ognal syntax that we use so that we can access each of these attributes of specimen. So now I'm going to choose save. Okay, looks like my application server Tomcat is still running. I'll terminate that to make life a little easier on us. Okay, now I think we're ready to start adding a little bit to our specimen page. We've done very similar things in the past where we have uh, like our add plant form. This is kind of like an add specimen form. So let's see what we had there. We had an output label and then a value and um, input text. So a little mix of a label and an input text. We can borrow this construction. We have this within a form tag. So uh, I'm going to borrow the growl and I'm going to borrow one of the output label and input text tuples. I know that's a little bit off screen at the moment. We'll see it in full detail when we go to the specimen table. Okay, specimen. Uh, we will put this within our form. Control V and let me control M so we can see this in high definition. First of all, remember what the growl is. The growl is where we can put some kind of validation method. Okay, or I'm sorry, I shouldn't say validation method. The growl is where we can put some information to the user and a pop up. If you've done Android programming before, this is similar to a toast. It's a message that appears and then goes away without any user interaction. So for collecting information from the user, we want to have a way to say, hey, uh, we have a validation error or something like that. Okay, so now instead of genus, I'll say latitude. And then I'm going to say instead of plant, I'm going to say specimen dot latitude. Okay, and now we'll simply uh, copy and paste this. And to be honest with you, you know, I should say specimen vo dot specimen dot latitude. So we'll do that ognal syntax to grab onto this thing called specimen vo. Okay, so let's duplicate this. Let's do longitude and then we'll do planted by and planted date. Okay, and longitude. Okay. And then we'll say planted by. And over here we'll say planted by. And then again we'll say planted date. And planted date. For the planted date we should really use a calendar, not a free text field like we have here. And for the uh, Latitude and longitude, we should probably constrain it uh, to have only numbers. We will take care of that, but not right now. We just want to get the very basics up and ensure that it works. The next thing we're going to want is this command button, which is going to act uh, as a way to save the item. So I'm going to add my command button. Value equals submit, or we could say value equals save. Action listener. For the action listener, let's say specimenvo.save. That's a method we're going to need to make. And then update growl. That's an opportunity for the save method to post a message to either say that it was saved or maybe that a validation failed or something like that. I'm going to go ahead and save this page. And now let's go to our specimen vo and let's make that save method. Now because the save method is called as part of a command button it is going to be a navigation method. So we're going to want to say public string save and I'll just put in one of my dummy lines int i equals 1 plus 1 and the reason for that what do you not like here? Oh okay uh, let's say return specimen saved and that will be a navigation rule that we will define in our faces configuration file. But for the moment, let's just make sure that our specimen is getting populated properly. So snap a breakpoint, save. I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to rebuild and then restart the application server. And then we're going to see if by the time we hit this method, our specimen is populated with the values that we've entered into the form. Just a moment. 
Now I tried this out and realized I had an issue when I hit submit. And I could have uh, I, I could have fixed the issue and edited this video and you never would have known it would have happened. But I decided it was an easily good an equally good learning experience to see what the issue is and how to fix it. You see there's something called target unreachable specimen return null. We go up a little bit more and we'll see that target unreachable specimen null, uh, a few other errors here. Now what specimen? Well remember how we're using specimen in our page. Let me go back to our page here. And just a moment. So we have our specimen XHTML. Uh, remember that we're using OGNL, OGNL syntax, object graph notation language, to save each of the items here in our form into specimen vo dot specimen dot latitude. What it's telling us here is that this specimen object has never been initialized. In other words, we've never constructed an object. And so if we go back and take a look, let's look at our uh, specimen vo, our specimen value object. And what we're going to see is that it has not been initialized because we're not calling a constructor. But remember I said we shouldn't call a constructor too. We should let Spring do the work for us. What I failed to do is I failed to tell Spring to do the work for us. So what I need to do is add an at inject here. And that tells Spring inject this variable with an object that it creates. But on the same note, I need to go back to my specimen DAO and add an at named attribute, which tells Spring to pay attention to this and say, hey, this is a bean that we want to make an object out of. We want Spring to handle that instantiation. And then we want the ability to inject it into another bean. So at named, that's the Java class that will be injected. And then at inject, that is a variable of that bean's type where we want the bean to be injected. So it's two pieces of a puzzle coming together, at named and at inject. With that fixed, let's go ahead and uh, restart. And what we should see now is uh, success. Now we've added those inject parameters. I'm going to add just a little bit of dummy data here. I've set a breakpoint so we can hit submit. And sure enough, our breakpoint fires. And take a look, we're on the save method, specimen VO. Let's expand this. And here's the specimen. And is it populated? Yep. All that dummy data that I just entered is successfully populated. So in our next video, we're going to create a Hibernate file. And we're going to create a table so that we can actually save this specimen into that table. I look forward to seeing you then.